Hey guys, welcome back to The Fool Show. Of course, I am Foolish Phil. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you really like it, hit that subscribe. I really appreciate those. My subscriber list is growing and growing. Thanks so much for that. It really tells me you guys enjoy what I'm talking about. Today, I wanted to talk about Michigan's 82 to 58 victory over the Purdue Boilermakers, number three Purdue Boilermakers, and wow, you, you just you just got to start in my mind. What a change from last game. Michigan squeaked out. I think it was 57-56 victory at Penn State. The second half was dreadful offensively. Both teams did poorly, right? What a flip the script from what the first game versus Purdue, where both teams just shot very well. It was like both game, both teams were pretty close together, like in the 80s, something like that. So now Michigan just played, you know, terribly and still won. I'd rather have an ugly win than a bad loss or even a good loss, right? You might say Purdue's first game, the first first Purdue game was a good loss, but it's still a loss. Rather have an ugly win than a good loss. But tonight. Michigan was able to go out and just fire on all cylinders. And they just were able to put it all together. That's the problem. Maybe it's the problem with youth. It's the problem with this team. It's like you see the potential so much there. You see Houston and Diabate and Eli and Jones and Hunter playing good games. But then tonight they put it all together. And... I think the bench had two points. Out of 82 points, the bench had two, I think. And that was uh, Brandon Johns Jr. layup. And so, just like, what this team can be with that talent. But they just have to put it together. All right, so, I want to give you some foolish thoughts here. First off, you could see Matt Painter of Purdue was really concerned about Hunter Dickinson. And how he shot the ball really well with the first game. So, they definitely worked him over, they forced him, they stayed on him, out past the three-point line. Well, what does that do? That opens up the lane for some cuts for Diabate. Diabate was getting dunks going on. He was getting some good assists from Devontae Jones, who I totally played an excellent game. I think he had 11 assists, 10 assists, sorry, 10 assists for Devontae Jones. And so Hunter Dickinson, his threat of hitting the threes, pulls the big out there. And then, there you go, Diabate goes off and he ends up with having 15 points. And so how many of those were just really close to the rim or dunks? Just excellent. Not to miss the fact that Edie got early foul trouble and he had to go to the bench. So that really made them short-handed, Purdue did. And they could not cover Diabate when the Diabate was aggressive. And that's just the theme here, right? Michigan was aggressive. They out-rebounded. Purdue obviously helps again without Edie out there for much of the first half, but they out-rebounded Purdue by, I think, 12. They also had seven fewer turnovers. I've always been nagging on this team for the turnovers. They ended up with under 10 turnovers. I think it was seven for the game to Purdue's 14. So this team just, like, took all the bugaboos that they had all year, and they kind of just shoved them the, to the side. And this is what you get. You have a game where you're just, like, Hitting 57% from threes. Eli went 4 of 4. Hunter hit 4 of them. I think um, Houston hit 4 of them. Like, just crazy, man. There's At one point in the second half, Michigan hit 3 straight 3-pointers to no points for Purdue. So nice 9-0 run right there. And then Eli had a little hook shot. 11-0 run. It was Eli, Hunt, sorry, Houston, Eli, and Hunter. Bam, bam, bam. 9 straight points. But a key here... I just want to go back to the first half. A really big key here is that it was a 24 to 24 game with seven minutes left, right? 24, 24, and and that possession, seven ten to go in the first half. Hunter Dickinson drained a three. Over the rest of the half, Hunter Dickinson had ten points and one assist. So like Hunter Dickinson just took over offensively for the team. So he had. Out of the 15 points Michigan scored, he had 10 of them. And he assisted on the other one. So he accounted for 12 points of Michigan's 15 there at the end of the first half. And that just set the tone. And you had the very the last other shot they hit was Diabate getting another dunk 
A nice sweet pass there from Devontae Jones again. And that, that dunk right at the end of the half just built the lead, I think, to 39-28 or something like that, maybe. Oh, sorry, 38-29. I switched the numbers. And it, But it was just the, the feel that, like, Michigan's going to do this. They had the confidence, right? Again, it was just so much effort, and it was crispness on the offensive floor. I also got to give Joan Howard mad props. He did that doubling of Ivy, which really kept him out of the lane. Just some stats I saw, right? Ivy had seven assists and two turnovers in the first game. Last night, he had zero assists and five turnovers. So the defensive adjustment by Joan Howard was right on point. They also really tried to force other Purdue players to hit shots. They just didn't do it. So Michigan forced Ivy to give up the ball, and then it, you know, outside of Williams and his miraculous shooting against Michigan, that guy cannot miss against Michigan. He just, like, does all these spins, hooks, and the ball falls in, and he just wishes he could play Michigan every game. <laughs> Man, they're just... Uh, that, that does remind me, though, in the second half, Hunter hit a three-pointer. Michigan was going pretty good. It was probably like 12, 14-point lead. And then you just see Williams just throw up his hands like, what are you supposed to do? This guy can beat me, dribble, take me off the dribble, get to the hoop, and then he can just sit out, sit out here and drain three-pointers. So he just threw up his arms as if to say, what am I supposed to do? And you, sometimes you just have those games, man, where the other team's just locked in. Right, the law of averages, right? Michigan shot over 50%. Overall, they shot 57%, I think, from three-pointers. The law of averages, right? Because against Penn State, Michigan shot in the 20% on threes. And, you know, the last game against Michigan State, the first game against Michigan State, they shot dreadfully in the second half. Dreadfully in the second half of Penn State. The law of averages, right? Why do the shots go down tonight versus the other games? This basketball. Another thing I just want to say on Howard here. I loved his adjustments, how he spaced the floor, how he anticipated, you know, what Purdue would do, and it worked very well. Don't get me wrong, hitting your shots makes any coach look good. But I was reading one um, update prediction thing about Michigan-Purdue, and one of the guys there was saying, Michigan can win this game if the coaching's good. I mean, that's just like a really stupid analogy, I would say, really dumb. Because what are you saying that if, he's really taking a dig at Coach Howard. He's saying if Michigan loses, it was because of coaching. So if Michigan would lose to the number three team in the country, it's because it was bad coaching. Like, what, what kind of a take is that? Michigan has been an up and down team. I guess Coach Howard really should tell his players, hey, you, hit that open three-pointer. Why didn't you listen to the coach, right? Or the coach told you to miss the open three-pointer. So... I just think that mentality is like Michigan won because Coach Howard that did something. It's like he's still coach. He's still the same coach. It's just that he adjusted and the adjustments worked really well. Don't get me wrong. I wish he would have made those adjustments in the first game, but Ivy was just, you know, clicking so well in the second half of the first game. He learned. He adjusted. That's what coaches do. Michigan got the win. So, just to say, well, if Michigan loses, then it's on the coach. It's like, that's just a stupid say, statement, man. Just saying. I think the coaches get too much blame, and they get too much glory when a team wins. Because, you know what? They're just calling the plays. The players have to execute. The players have to go out there and defend the players, right? The coach puts them in position. The players have to execute, is what it is. All right. Michigan gets the win. 82-58. to 58, Just... Basically, everything Michigan touched turned to gold tonight. It was this great game. And then, if you saw at the end, the, the fans stormed the court. And just, why not? It's been such an up-and-down year. You just beat the number three team in the country handily, right? Handily. It was a blowout. So, yeah, storm the court. Have fun. Hopefully, you had no problems with the fans and, you know, Purdue players. Hopefully not. I didn't hear anything about that. So, hopefully, there was no issues there. 82-58, Michigan gets a big marquee win. Next, host Ohio State, ranked Ohio State on Saturday. Hopefully Michigan can keep the momentum rolling, and that would really be another marquee win if they could win that game. Hey, 
Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Put them in the comments below, and I'll try to respond as I'm able to. And until I see you guys next time, as always, go blue.